So this simple math problem will confuse a lot of people. Let's see if you can figure out the answer. So the question is, how many ways can two kittens be selected from a litter of six? All right, now we do have a multiple choice question here and let's take a look at our answers. So A is three, B is six, C is 15, and D is 30. Now feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna fully solve this in just one second. But uh, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. Okay, now before I get into the solution, let me tell you the answer. So the correct solution is C15. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a nice little happy face in the A+. Plus. Great work. Now this problem has to deal with counting because we're asked how many ways. So we need to know how to count the situation in this problem. So let's read it again. It says, how many ways can two kittens be selected from a litter of six kittens? All right, so again, the concept here is counting. We need to know how to count this situation. Now again, the correct answer is 15 and maybe some of you kind of reason through this, but uh, what I really want to emphasize here is the mathematics to solve this problem. So let's kind of visualize what's going on. And here are my uh, six kittens. And the question is, uh, uh, the question here is how many ways can two kittens be selected? So we're going to select two kittens from a litter of six. So we need to keep this in mind, right? So we're going to pick two kittens out from this litter of six. So how many ways can you do this? Well, here is our uh, six kittens. Now, of course, they uh, would hopefully have all names, but we'll just call them A, B, C, D, E, and F. So here is our litter of six uh, kittens. So let's uh, pick out two. So maybe we can uh, pick these two out right here. So this means that we would have A and B. Now, does it make a difference whether we have A and B, in other words, uh, kitten A and B, or maybe we pick uh, kitten B and then A, right? So these two combinations right here are the same. In other words, order doesn't make a difference, all right? So again, if we picked uh, these two uh, cats right here, these two kittens, whether we picked uh, E first and then C or C and E, these combinations are the same. So the concept that I'm trying to uh, stress here is that we're talking about uh, counting a situation where the order doesn't make a difference, right? So in other words, A and B is the same thing as B and A. Now, there are many counting situations where order does make a difference, and you'll see how this comes into play in just one second, but uh, let's take a look at this example. So if I said, how many area codes can you build from uh, three of these numbers, all right? So maybe you take these uh, three right here, zero, one, and two. So how many area codes can we build with zero, one, and two? All right, so let me kind of reframe the question here. So given the, the, uh, the numbers zero, one, and two, how many area codes can we build? Now in this case, order does make a difference, right? So zero, one, and two is the same combination of one, zero, and two but these two right here are completely unique. In other words, zero, one, two is one way, one, zero, two is another way, and two, zero, one is another way. So in this situation, when we are looking at this problem, the order definitely makes a difference. So you need to be able to distinguish whether your problem involves a counting situation where the order makes a difference like first place, second place, and third place, or in a situation where it doesn't matter, like this particular situation right here. Now, when order does not make a difference, this is called a combination. And when order does make a difference, this is called a permutation. And there are some formulas that you need to understand about permutations and combinations. But in this particular case, we're gonna focus in on a combination. And the math here looks a little bit scary, but actually it's not that difficult. Okay, so now that we know that order doesn't make a difference, in other words, we're trying to determine how many combinations of two kittens can we make given uh, a litter of six kittens. 
And it doesn't make a difference whether I picked uh, this uh, cat first or this kitten first, and then this kitten or this kitten first, and then this kitten. It doesn't make a difference because these two cats together still form one combination. So what we need to understand from a mathematical standpoint is this formula right here, and that is NCR. Now this looks a little bit uh, scary, but actually it is pretty easy to use. So the way this works is the following. So we're gonna try to determine how many combinations of two can we make given six things. So in this problem, we're looking for how many combinations of two kittens can we form or make given a total of six kittens. All right, so now let's get into the math here. Again, NCR is the formula that we need to use for this combination. And N, again, is going to be six and R will be two. So I'm gonna show you a formula here. And for a lot of people, when they first see it, it looks pretty scary, but actually this is not that difficult. All right, so to calculate this, we have NCR, it's equal to and now this little exclamation mark means factorial, all right? So I'm gonna explain this in one second, but this is called N factorial over R factorial times N minus R in parentheses factorial. Now again, N is going to be six and R is going to be two. So effectively, we're just gonna plug in these numbers into this formula and do the calculations. Now, of course, if you don't understand what a factorial is, this seems a little bit uh, scary, but again, it's not that difficult. Real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely gotta check out my full courses. Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video, but they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem and don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so once again, here is our combination formula and there is a separate formula for permutation. So uh, the first thing again in any counting problem is to determine whether you're dealing with a combination or permutation. Now, again, we're trying to figure out how many uh, combinations of two we can get out of a total of six. So how many combinations of two kittens can we make given a litter of six kittens? So N is going to be six and R is going to be two. And what we need to do here is plug in for all these N's and R's, these actual values. So when we do that, we're going to get the following. Okay, so we're gonna get six factorial, all right? So again, N is six. So this would be six factorial over R, R is two. So that's gonna be two factorial times six minus two, which of course is N minus R factorial. All right, so now we need to discuss what this little exclamation mark means. And that doesn't mean say this uh, number real loud, right? So that's my attempt at a little math joke. You're not gonna say six really loud, but uh, let's talk about what factorial means right now before we solve this problem. Okay, so a factorial, matter of fact, let me do it right here, and we'll start off with an easy example like three factorial. So all the uh, factorial is, is you're going to start with this number three, all right? And we're just going to build a product and we're gonna count down by one. So three factorial is equal to three times two times one. That's all it is. So if you had seven factorial, it would be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay, so that is what factorial is. And the only thing you need to know about, fa about factorial other than, uh, other than these two things is that zero factorial by definition is one. Okay, so if you understand this, then we can uh, complete these calculations right here. Again, it's not that difficult once you understand what factorial means. So now we have six factorial over two factorial and then six minus two, of course, is four. So we need to calculate this, six factorial over two factorial times four factorial. So now that you understand what factorial is, maybe you wanna pause the video and see if you can actually produce the correct answer. All right, now if you're actually able to come up with 15, uh, doing this calculation right here with your understanding of factorial, that is fantastic because that is the right answer. But uh, let's take a look at the actual math and here it is. So again, we have six factorial in the numerator. 
So that is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then 2 uh, factorial is simply 2 times 1 times 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, what we have here is a great opportunity to cross-cancel many like factors. So these 1s can cross-cancel, these 2s uh, can cross-cancel, uh, these 3s can cross-cancel, and so can these 4s. So what we're left with is simply 6 times 5 in the numerator and 2 times 1 down in the denominator. Okay, so when we do that, 6 times 5 is obviously 30, and 2 times 1 is 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15, which is the correct answer. So if you got this right, that is fantastic. So congratulations on knowing something about combinations. Now, if you didn't know what you were doing, but you learned something, well, that is the whole purpose of my videos. Now, if you want to continue building your math skills, let me leave you with a few suggestions. One, make sure you like and subscribe because I have thousands of videos on my YouTube channel from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. And I'm basically posting math videos every day. Now, if you want to kind of take it a step further, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.